Good morning. Today's reading station is going to be reading a nonfiction text. Before we get started, please make sure you have the following items. You need your blue reading journal open to page 49, your Scholastic magazine that is titled, Are Your Apps Spying on You?, a highlighter, and a pen or pencil to write with. If you don't have these items now, please pause the video and go get them. You'll also want to have your earbuds. <clears throat> we have talked about the thief strategy in depth before, so I'm just going to quickly review it, but leave my blue reading journal handy so that I can refer back to it as I read the article. The T in thief stands for title. When I read the title, I can quickly think to myself, do I already know something about this? Does this sound familiar? Are some of the words in the title familiar? The headings. The headings are where I can find different topics within my article. The introduction at the beginning of the text. Every first sentence in a section. We know from writing that typically our first sentence is a topic sentence, so they can have lots of great information the visuals and the vocabulary. The visuals are the pictures, the graphs, the captions that go with the pictures, and those vocabulary words that are usually in bold or italicized print. <coughs> the E stands for the end of article or end of chapter questions. That gives us a purpose for reading. It lets us know what we should be looking for. And then that S is for summarizing our thinking before we start reading. Turn in your Scholastic Magazine to page four. Remember that you can pause the video at any time that you feel like you are not understanding what we're talking about. The title of this article is Benjamin Franklin. Now that name sounds pretty familiar to me and I know that he is an important part of our nation's history. Our first bold uh, heading says, he helped create the documents that shaped our nation. I bet this is going to talk about the Declaration of Independence. My next heading says, Never Stop Learning. Hmm, I bet Benjamin Franklin loved to learn and was always exploring new things. The next mar uh, title says, Making His Mark. That's a heading. Making his mark. I wonder if he went around marking on things, or I wonder if that's a figurative language, meaning that he did some important things that make us remember him. This heading says, Creating a Nation. Hmm, I wonder if he was around before the United States was an official country. The I stands for the Introduction. I think this is probably considered the introduction. He helped create the documents that shape our nation. Every first sentence. I really like to highlight the first sentence in each paragraph. Have you ever borrowed books from a public library? Well, sure I have. But Franklin's biggest accomplishment was helping to create the United States. Now that is important. Franklin was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1706. Wow, it's already 2020. That's like 2022. That's like 500 years ago. Franklin went to school for only two years, but that didn't stop him from learning. Wow, I bet some of you wish you could go to school for only two years. When he was 12, Franklin went to work for his brother. In 1729, Franklin bought a newspaper. Well, that doesn't seem that significant. Over the next decades, a decade is 10 years, so 10, 20, 30 years, Franklin also loved to study how things worked. That sounds kind of like a it would make a good YouTube channel. Then he invented lightning rods, which attracted lightning. Wonder why he would want lightning. Like many colonists, Franklin wanted to break free from Britain. Oh, see, he was around before we became a country. 
I wonder what a colonist is. Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence in 1776. That's pretty impressive. That's some big writing for someone who only went to school for two years. The 13 colonies eventually won the war. Over the course of his life, Franklin worked his way from poor candle maker to inventor, writer, and leader. And finally, down here is a quote. Wish not so much to live long as to live well, Franklin once wrote. Many say Franklin did both. Wow. Wonder what that means. Live well as opposed to live long. We know what it means to live long. Now I'm going to look at visuals and vocabulary. I see this box over here that has a couple of important vocabulary words. Colonial, an adjective of or relating to the original 13 colonies. Delegates, which is a plural noun, people who represent others at a meeting. I think we talked about this in reading when we read Grace for President, and they talked about the um, Electoral College and the delegates. Um, I'm wrong. I was not thinking correctly. The delegates are like the people who represent the constituents which is what we talked about during um, Grace for President. Okay, I can find those words also in the text because they're bold. Franklin was one of the delegates from different states who met in Philadelphia to create the U.S. Constitution. So he was one of the people that represented others. He worked to improve life in colonial Philadelphia. So colonial means ever relating to the original 13 colonies. So that would be before Philadelphia was part of a state. Okay, now I'm going to look at the visuals. I know that a lot of times on iLearn, uh, the questions might have something to do with what we find over here in the sidebars or in our visuals, so I always want to make sure that I read those. This is probably a picture of Benjamin Franklin. Ben's big ideas. How are, here are some important moments in Franklin's life. In 1752, as his son watches, Franklin risked his life to fly a kite during a storm to prove that lightning is a form of electricity. Now, I have seen this image before. In 1776, a secret meeting in Philadelphia, Franklin helps Thomas Jefferson write the Declaration of Independence. And in 1787, after nearly four months of debate, Franklin and other delegates signed the U.S. Constitution. That's pretty cool to think about all those years ago, those men getting together to write our Constitution. Benjamin Franklin. He helped create the documents that shaped our nation. Oh, I forgot. I, good thing I looked over here on page 49. I need to go back and look at the end of article or end of chapter questions. First, on the back of my scholastic, what is the section never stop learning mostly about? Which of the following may be described as a delegate? Which event in Franklin's life happened last? And then I also want to look at my worksheet, which is going to ask me to give two details about Benjamin Franklin's childhood list two adjectives describing Franklin and explain your choices. Now, I just want to quickly review what an adjective is. An adjective is a word that describes a noun. It could be yellow or purple. Uh, words that are numbers are adjectives, like seven or ten. But I don't think those would be great adjectives for describing a person. So I might be thinking of some of the character traits I know. Maybe he was kind or smart or angry or excited or nervous or 
honorable or intelligent. What are your, some of the adjectives, some of the um, character traits that we've talked about that we might be able to use to describe Benjamin Franklin? And explain your choice. Why did you choose that word? That is probably going to be a place where you're going to find text evidence to prove your character trait or adjective that you're looking for. Describe at least two of Franklin's inventions. The word describe doesn't mean to just list it. Describe it. Say what it is and maybe what it is used for or how it works. Describe, again, two ways that Franklin helped shape the United States. So again, we're not looking for a list of words, but we're kind of trying to talk about how he shaped the United States. Now, as I summarize my thinking, I am thinking that this article is going to tell me a lot about how Benjamin Franklin helped to write the Declaration of Independence and helped our country become one of the greatest countries. He helped create the documents that shaped our nation. Please follow with your finger as I'm reading. Have you ever borrowed books from a public library? mailed a package at the post office, seen firefighters at work? If so, you have Benjamin Franklin to thank. He helped start each of these services in America. He was also a skilled inventor. He created classes, glasses called bifocals to help people see clearly and a stove to better heat homes. But Franklin's biggest accomplishment was helping to create the United States. Never stop learning. Franklin was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1706. At the time, America was made up of colonies controlled by Great Britain. Franklin went to school for only two years, but that didn't stop him from learning. He was a curious kid who read hundreds of books. At 10 years old, he started working in his father's shop making candles. Now, 10 years old is how old some of you are. When he was 12, Franklin went to work for his brother. Part of his job was printing newspapers. He soon realized that he wanted to write for a paper, not just print one. When he was 17, Franklin set off for Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, when you're 17, you'll probably be a student at Center Grove High School, but Benjamin Franklin took off to Pennsylvania. Making his mark. In 1729, Franklin bought a newspaper. The Pennsylvania Gazette became a well-respected paper in Pennsylvania. Now, I was thinking he just bought a copy of a newspaper, but he bought an entire newspaper that he wrote and sold to other people. Over the next decades, he worked to improve life in colonial Philadelphia. He started a free public school and the first hospital in the colonies, among other services. Franklin also loved to study things, how things worked. In 1752, he tied a metal key to a kite string and flew it in a storm. <clears throat> Electricity from lightning traveled down the string and struck the key. Franklin had proved that lightning is electrical. Then he invented lightning rods, which attracted lightning. This prevented it from hitting buildings and causing fires. Creating a nation. Like many colonists, Franklin wanted to break free from Britain. In 1775, the American Revolution began. The fight for independence was on. Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence in 1776. Franklin and other leaders helped edit the document, which declared the colonies free from Britain. The 13 colonies eventually won the war. In 1787, Franklin was one of the delegates from different states who met in Philadelphia to create the U.S. Constitution. This plan for running the new nation is still used today. Over the course of his life, Franklin worked his way from poor candle maker to inventor, writer, and leader. He died in 1790 at the age of 84. Wish not so much to live long as to live well, Franklin once wrote. Many say Franklin did both. 
I think when he said live uh, to live well, I think that he meant to do good and help others and to make uh, try to do important things for your community and your nation. When you go to the back, you'll see that questions four, five, and six are directly related to the Benjamin Franklin article. I prefer when you answer that question to color it in with some sort of pen because pencil is really hard to read. I also want to give you a friendly reminder to write your name on this back page of your Scholastic News. When you turn this in, it is hard to know who colored in the circles. Please make sure you put your name on your paper. Finish answering these questions and then turn it into your class reading tray. Then you may work to see if you can complete these bulleted points and these descriptions. Have a great rest of your afternoon.